Live. It's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. What a 24 hours it has been. North Dakota State battled the elements in Illinois this weekend and secured an outright Missouri Valley Football Conference Championship. It's the first outright title since 2013. Would it secure home field throughout the playoffs? Well, the bracket is out, and we welcome in head coach Chris Kleiman. And before we get to the bracket, just talk about the outright title, battling the elements. Uh, that was an impressive effort by your guys, and to finish off this title is, is a great feat. Yeah, I was so excited for our, our seniors and for our football team to go to Illinois State, a really good football team. Uh, have the elements. That's the worst conditions I've seen played in, coached yeah. in, anything, and how much it deteriorated from looking like it was just a little bit of a rainstorm to <laughs> an out-and-out -out blizzard uh, in the second quarter. But so excited. We know it's the toughest league in, in the FCS, and to uh, to go 7-1, and one, uh, and we talked about it, having to win it on the road. You know, we had to win at Youngstown State, had to win at Illinois State, two really tough places to win, and we were able to do it. So hats off to our guys. Well, the bracket is out, and uh, the top eight seeds, let's break them down for you. Richard Johnson, the athletic director at Wofford, uh, put out this top eight, and, you know, it's kind of exactly how I thought it was going to go. And they got it right, folks. They got it right. North Dakota State was the two, the outright Valley champ, toughest conference in the country. They did move the Bison back up to number two, Jacksonville State's three, Central Arkansas four. South Dakota State, being a five, is on the opposite side of the Bison, and they earned that. They had a better resume than Sam Houston State. There's no question about it. So they are on James Madison's side. Your initial thoughts about this top eight, Coach? Well, I agree with you. I think they, they got it right. Obviously, they rewarded us by playing in the toughest conference. Uh, every game is going to be difficult. You still have to be able to navigate through your side of the bracket. But uh, uh, without a doubt, we're really pleased with how that lays out. And uh, now we just have to go out and execute and uh, hopefully get some guys healthy and be ready to roll. No question. You really can't have any argument about that top eight there. The Bison is the number two. It's fantastic. Now the Valley did get five teams in. A little surprising that South Dakota leaked into the bracket. Uh, they had lost four of their last five. They did not win a game in November. They have one win since October 14th. But again, they played in the Valley. And if you're going to say that the Valley is the toughest conference in the nation, probably deserve five teams in. So congratulations to all the coaches out there that got their teams in, Coach, and it's good for the league to get five teams. Yeah, it really is, and it's a credit to South Dakota winning an FBS game, beating Bowling yeah. Green. I think that put them over the top, and they played all, all those teams pretty tough with the exception of us, and, and uh, I think people want to see Chris Strebler play again. And, yeah. and uh, so, uh, But, uh, no, excited for our conference. And Northern Iowa leaks in. They're 6-2 and two in the league this year, and uh, they are in. Western Illinois is in. Uh, yeah. It's good for all those those coaches to get into the the playoffs yeah it really is it helps our league and, and once again now we have to try to find a way to win a few games within yeah. the league you know to so with five teams in there get some quality wins uh so that we can continue to have that uh, on our resume to say you know not only do we get in the tournament but we have success when we're there well let's how does this set up for the bison let's look at the bracket and the, and the pod that we got so it's northern arizona against san diego the toreros were here last year after they upset cal poly can they upset uh, Northern Arizona? Certainly very possible. San Diego got a lot of momentum uh, late in the season. What do you think about those two potential matchups? Well, uh, San Diego, at least we're familiar with. They were here last year. That was as well a coach football team yeah. uh, as I've been around. I think they do a phenomenal job there. Uh, Northern Arizona, fortunately for us, we have a lot of film on them because they played Western Illinois. They played Illinois State. So at least we have some video to go off of this year. Uh, and then obviously Elon. Furman Wofford, really good perennial teams every year uh, in FCS. Yeah, that's the Carolina pod up there, and uh, Wofford is a very good team. Triple option. They lost their FBS game the last game of the year, so really they were a 10-1 and one team. Really, really good team. They've been in the Dome before, too, with Eric Breitenstein. Remember him? He was a bowling ball. Boy, they have a great offense, and, yeah. and last year, people will forget, they probably should have beaten Youngstown yep. at Youngstown, I think maybe in the second round, and Youngstown yep. maybe won an overtime, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, they play really good defense, and they run the football two pretty good formulas to win championships. Yeah, Wofford was physical in that Youngstown yeah. game and almost went to the semifinals last year, so certainly a, a capable opponent. Well, there's the bracket, folks, and the committee uh, got it right, so we applaud them for sure. Let's break down this uh, game yesterday against Illinois State. It was just horrendous conditions. <laughs> it started out as rain, turned to snow, then it just got cold, so we had all three phases of the weather covered there. Tough to throw 
but Easton connects on a third and 10 here. This first drive was so critical. There was 25 to 30 mile an hour winds we were going into. They elected to kick uh, with the wind and just us handing or having the football for about seven of that minute, uh, seven minutes of the first quarter really took the clock and, and at least were able to flip the field position. Bruce Anderson, Ty Brooks, uh, you really got it past midfield here working the clock like you said you do have to punt here uh, after this situation but this was a valuable valuable drive it, it really was and you had to probably get to the 15 yard line to even attempt a field goal yeah. because it, I don't think anything outside of 30 yards you probably could make anyway so it was great to just be able to keep the clock going uh, manufacture some plays they do a nice job here I thought their front four was really good and uh, we uh, they gave us some problems yeah, that Dalton Keene is a football player, no question. Well, South Dakota, or uh, Illinois State, excuse me, got the ball third and three and out. Bruce Anderson then goes for 25. And once again, we're, we're going into the wind here, so we're doing a really nice job of why the conditions were somewhat manageable before the snow and, and sleet hit. Uh, we were able to keep their offense off the field, and, and a great job by the offense. You know, Jackson Kuntz was really good in this game. Uh, I thought this was a, one of key uh, punts that he had, pins him at the two. Yeah, Jackson Kuntz was phenomenal, and, and James Fisher was as, uh, as great as Jackson was. Having to snap the ball as many times, and Fish was on point every time, and that's why he's an All-American player. This running back they have, he's a young kid, James Robinson from Rockford, Illinois, very good player. He's a beast. He's 225 yeah. pounds and, and uh, runs with a low pad level. He's a really good player. Well, they did have to punt there. They got a little breathing room, but uh, Jamitri Williams uh, flips the field again, so you get, uh, you're get you still winning the field position here. Yeah, we are. Good job on the jet sweep once you get it out past the 40. Now we have the wind, even though it's still difficult to throw because of how hard it's raining, we at least have the wind. And here's a big play by Code Green, a 15-yard tackle for loss. Yeah, we, we talked about having the extra quarterback. They played both kids, but when they went with number five, we knew it was a run game, and we really got after them pretty well. And you see the driving rain. It was incredible. Here's another punt. Now, this is with the win, but it's still a good job to, to get them deep. Yeah, and you can see how hard it is even just to catch the football with Jackson. Great job. Uh, Demetri Williams was down there all game long with Fish, and they did a really good job. So pin him deep, but the old James Robinson goes for 25 again. You're right. He's just a really good player. Yeah, he's got really good vision. He bounces it outside. I thought for the most part, as tough as the conditions were, we tackled really well. Yeah, I agree. Third and eight now. They get seven. Uh, this is a really good hit by Jalen Allison as the snow's coming now. Now you start seeing it turn, and this is a third and eight, and Jalen Allison just strokes him wow. for a seven-yard gain. Uh, or they keep the ball and keep the, keep us away from it. And uh, now you can see the, the, the field conditions and everything just deteriorating. Yeah, the weather got nasty. Late second quarter, early third quarter is when it was the worst, and it's really bad here, and teams just trying to navigate towards half at this Yeah, point. it was third and one, and, and they fumbled the snap, and we're able to, uh, to force the fourth down. But And they were punting the ball 15, 20 yards, but now you can't see the yard lines. Uh, it's really, you can see coming off the field, it's... Uh, People were excited to get to the locker room at halftime. Yes, we lived that, and it's as bad as it looked. Uh, there's no question. It was scoreless uh, in the first half. There were going to be opportunities. Someone had to put points on the board, and they would in the second half when we get to that. This is the Nodak Insurance halftime scoreboard. The total yards you see, just not a lot. Uh, Illinois State had not uh, even passed for a single yard uh, in the first half. Before we get to the second half on our Gate City Bank hot seat, Jeff Ilias. All right, Jeff, what is the most enjoyable thing you did this past summer? Uh, definitely spend some time at the lake with the family and friends. Okay. All right, you're from Lidgerwood, North Dakota. Tell me something cool about your hometown. Uh, everything we need and nothing we don't there, for sure. <laughs> All right, when it comes to phone usage, do you like to text or talk more? I'd rather call someone and get the conversation done as fast as possible. All right, th this is a fan question. If you had to give up movies or video games, what would you give up? Definitely video games. I wouldn't be able to do without movies. Okay. <laughs> if you were given $10 million, what would you buy first? I would buy my dad a new pickup. Nice. What makes a great leader? Uh, ability to relate to people. Okay. What do you like most about the new locker room? Everything. It's just 10 times better on every level. So. What does the tradition of Bison football mean to you? It means brotherhood and doing doing anything you can for the guy next to you. All right, thanks, Jeff. I'm sure the weather was a big topic at halftime. How are you going to navigate that? 
Well, the biggest thing we talked about is an opportunity was going to come up in that second half, and, and we needed to seize it when it did and attack it, and we were going to uh, use the wind in the third quarter and try to pin them down there and see if we could make a play or two and try to get a lead in the third quarter, and uh, all that stuff worked out. Well, Illinois State got the balls. We rolled the second half here, but the defense really came up big. I, I thought the Bison came out of the locker room with a little fire, didn't they? Look at that weather. Wow. Yeah, they really did. We, our guys were really focused and ready to, to go and make some plays, and uh, we knew we could pin them down here. Once again, they have the other quarterback in, so we just were teeing off on him because we knew he wanted to carry it. Yeah, and he's from Texas, and he was not enjoying the weather. You could tell it in his body language. Here's a key play. Jackson Koontz to punt. They rough him. Yeah, and uh, it was a good call. Uh, they ran into him, and uh, obviously that doesn't give you a touchdown, but it gives you a little bit more life. And we thought if we could get it to the 20 or 25, we could attempt a field goal, but we needed to try to get some points and get a touchdown out of this, and we do. And here you have it at the 33 after the penalty, so great field position. Yeah, really good job in the third quarter, I thought, by our running backs and by uh, our Rams and, and the tight ends and receivers blocking and stuff. And, and we're really pushing the pile and getting big chunks of yards here. Bruce running hard. Great job, Bruce, there. And Easton keeps some uh, footing here and finds the end zone. Yeah, great job by Colin Connor of uh, sealing the edge uh, and Easton getting around there and, and big score. Yeah, that was. Uh, you know, you felt like seven might uh, do it. There were some more points later in the game here, though. It's seven nothing Bison right there, and James Robinson continued to come at you here. Yeah, he's a really good back. He's tough to arm tackle. Uh, great job by Jalen Allison uh, of pushing him out of bounds there and, and limiting the damage there. What an athletic play here, though. A huge play by Jabril Cox. Yeah, great play. You talk about getting your eyes around, and that's what we teach. And, and great play. And now he puts on his quarterback moves from high school. <laughs> And uh, there's a chance he can go and uh, makes a great job of making a play. And the return was uh, probably 30 or 40 yards and get us in a uh, short field again. And I know the guys will razz him because the quarterback tackled him. Yeah, exactly. You see some of his athletic ability there. Amazing. And how about Ty Brooks? Just real slippery here in the pile. Yeah, great job by Ty. Great blocking up front. Uh, Brock Robbins leading the way there and, and another big game for Ty. Bruce Anderson finishes it off. You get the touchdown, but you miss the extra point here, so it's 13-0. Yeah, great job uh, by Bruce getting us another score. We're up 13-0, and we had that extra point blocked and did a great job tackling the guy and, and eliminating them not getting the two points. You, yeah. you could just tell their body language started to change, too. The O-line is starting to get a big push here. Yeah, really doing a nice job, and, and we're pushing the pile, and, and Bruce is running hard. I thought Bruce played a great football game in those elements. Yeah, here he is again, churning out more yards. Yeah, he was able to get his pass level down uh, he did not turn the football over we did not as an offense which was really critical in the, in the conditions flip the field again here's another punt and another great job by Jackson Coons absolutely we we're probably at the 35 yard line and you can't kick a field goal so we're trying to just keep that long field going and, and uh, now they're inside the 10 yeah now the defense can pin their ears back and Chris Board does here yeah, really good job. You're just not going to be able to roll out very well, and, and uh, great play by the defense. Good job by Chris. I thought Chris played well. Playing, He played Will Linebacker this week. Tough to catch the ball, but I thought our guys handled it better than Illinois State. You see a drop here. <laughs> yeah, they drew, uh, drew up a good play, and, and that uh, number 11 has been a really good receiver for them. Three and out. Here comes Illinois State again. They actually complete a pass here that was hard to do. Yeah, I thought Colby put this one on the money. That was a tough throw. Uh, in between the safety and the corner, and uh, really good play by those guys. James Robinson is going to finish this off, and now it's 13-7, it's so now that missed extra point does loom large, doesn't it? It, it sure does. The, they were able to convert their extra point, it's 13-7, and now, you know, there's not a lot of time left, but we need right. to have a drive, because this is dead against the wind again, and I thought Easton does a great job, great job blocking up front, and then we flipped the field with a big play, but I, I think the neat thing is watching RJ and watching Bruce keep chasing the play, they do a good job punching the ball out from behind, but uh, see all the white jerseys there? There's only one red jersey. Yeah, exactly, and th that pretty much sealed it uh, because you get the ball at the one, and Easton finishes it off. Now it's 20 to 7, two scores again. Yep, absolutely. Inside of three minutes, two scores, and uh, they do a nice job moving the football down the field, but uh, uh, throwing the ball, just a little screen pass. Once again, Robinson's such a good player and, and breaks a couple of tackles there, but uh, great job of, of keeping them out of the end zone here. Yep, and they have a good tight end as well. Illinois State had a good team this year, didn't they? I mean, I don't know what their up and down record was, but uh, they have some players. Yeah, well, no question, and they'd probably beat you know 16, 18 teams in the field in the yeah. playoffs, and they're a six and five team that's not making the playoffs. Exactly. Here's the play that sealed the third outright Missouri Valley Football Conference title, seven and one, a fourth down stop. Just a great job by Jabril. Yeah, great job getting heat on the passer there, rolled him out, and then we knocked the ball away, and now we're taking a knee and.
secure our uh, outright championship. That feels good. 20 to 7. That's a great road win in tough, tough conditions. Look at that. The Bison rushed for 2. 45. That was a key to get over 200 in a game like that. Uh, Illinois State, uh, when they won this year, they rushed the ball. They could not run the ball in the Bison, 106, and zero penalties. That's a badge of courage right there for the coaching staff and everybody involved. That's hard to do right there. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. We didn't let the elements stop us, you know. We can't dwell on elements. We just got to attack it and just play football. Try to just get the ball and did what I could do when I got the ball. Uh, the coaches, they did a good job of putting me in a situation of play calling, which worked out in my favor. The same thing. I saw him turn last second. I was kind of amazed that he caught it. It was impressive. But uh, And then he started weaving around, and we had no idea what to do. We were just running. <laughs> we, I don't know if he knew what he was doing. But we, uh, I thought he had it there, and then he uh, let the quarterback get him. So I guess no. But it was, great. it was a great play. I've been kind of getting down on myself lately, and I just figured, you know, just have fun. It's all about having fun, you know. Not a lot of people get to play college football, so I just... You know, it's an experience for me, and I'm just glad I got to play out here with my brothers and just have fun. It's huge to be able to take that conference title out, right? I don't think we've done it too many times out of the seven years that we've won in a row here. So it's just huge just knowing that we can come out every week and perform like we do. We got to go on this little break, but then we got to come back harder, work harder than ever. We got to be more focused, and we just got to keep attacking the process. Great comments there by Bruce and a great game by him this weekend. This week's NODAC Insurance Player of the Game is a special teamer, though. Punter Jackson Kuntz had one of the toughest jobs in the midst of the brutal conditions. He had to punt the frozen football. He had to hold on extra points. But the play where he drew a personal foul on Illinois State was absolutely huge. He's new. He's new. Uh, not a big fan of it. <laughs> but uh, uh, luckily we go back to the Dome, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, I kind of saw the guy come across, and uh, he just kind of swiped my foot. So I kind of swallowed my pride and kind of rolled around for a little bit to see if I could get the penalty. So I was happy I did. Great sell job right there, then, uh, Jackson <laughs> Coots. That was a big, big penalty. Congratulations uh, to him. We have a great story coming up on James Hendricks. He's a, kind of a Swiss Army knife for this Bison football team. Stay with us. You'll enjoy the story. Welcome back to the show. The Bison have moved a player from offense to defense many times before. Esley Thornton from quarterback to linebacker. Marquise Bridges from wide receiver to corner. But the latest one really stands out because it's not completely permanent. James Hendricks is moving around, but not completely. He could play either side of the ball this Saturday if asked to. Alex Egan has this week's Olaf Anderson construction feature story. James Hendricks came to North Dakota State wanting to be the next great Bison quarterback, but plans changed, and Hendricks flipped over to the defensive backfield and has really thrived. Everyone respects James because of his ability to play football. Um, he, he's been a great addition to the defensive side, and we knew it in the spring. Hendricks isn't the first Bison to make the transition from offense to defense. Esley Thornton made the switch his sophomore season and says it's not an easy one to make. It's a lot mentally. I mean, to take on a new position, uh, move to the other side of the ball where things don't all translate to defense. I mean, he's got to learn a lot of new concepts. And he's had to keep his quarterback roots this year. With injuries, the fifth leading tackler on the team is still the team's emergency QB, which means he meets with the offense and the defense and spends time in practice with both groups. Well, this game is really complex and, and you can learn things every single day. And I think playing different positions helps with that. In the game against South Dakota, Hendricks picked up another new position, earning a start in playing a majority of the game at outside linebacker. And throughout it all, he's taken it in stride. I don't think you get overwhelmed, though. I think you just got to keep going through things every single day, and, and it'll be, almost become second nature. James has been given the nickname of Jimmy Football because he can pretty much do it all. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Alex Egan. Well-spoken, smart kid, James Hendricks. Yeah, that's why he's so well-liked on the team. It's all about the team for James. Uh, he'll play wherever to help us win, and he's had to do that over the last nine weeks, playing safety, playing linebacker, meeting with Coach Hedberg, practicing at quarterback. We've been fortunate uh, that he hasn't had to go into the game at quarterback, but he's always there, able to do that. And uh, uh, he's only a sophomore, so mm -hmm. his best football is still in front of him, and he continues to learn. He's just one of the smartest kids I've ever been around. Well done, James. A very nice kid, too. Uh, we take a look at the quarterback position in this week's Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison. Holden Hoshkis is from Florida, big kid at 6'4", that came out of the powerful Lakeland High School program. 
He was the prized quarterback recruit in this past class. He says it's the offense and the history at the position that ultimately brought him to Fargo. Well, I mean, obviously, it's nice to go to a place where people are getting drafted second overall. But, uh, you know, I, I, it was really just the offense that, that they run here. And it, it fitted Carson perfect. It fits me perfect. And that's what really, really sparked my interest. Two quarterbacks in the last class, Noah Sanders as well. Talk about those two. Yeah, Holden and Noah are going to be really good players. They're going to battle uh, this spring uh, and looking forward to it. I, I, they're both really competitive. They both are, are learning the system. They're both going to be coached by Coach Hedberg, so I know they're going to get great coaching, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see how it plays out. But excited about both young men. Yep, best of luck to those two guys. Well, the ticket uh, process, we're going to break that down for you. It's playoff time, folks. Bye week coming up. It's a fun time of year. Stay with us. Well, if you missed the top of the show, the bracket is out, and the Bison did get the number two seed. James Madison's the one, and here, here's our bottom half of the bracket here. It's the Carolina pod above us there. Uh, Big Sky in San Diego, much like last year when San Diego upset Cal Poly and then came to Fargo. Coach, uh, just initial thoughts again on uh, the pod that we drew. Well, Northern Arizona and San Diego, both uh, really good opponents. San Diego was in here last year. Uh, Northern Arizona, we've seen a lot on film. And then, obviously, above us, Wofford's been in here before uh, mm -hmm. several years ago, but a really good program. Yeah, they are. They run triple option. Uh, they have a really good quarterback in Brandon Goodson. Wofford does. And uh, Mike Ayers has been there for over 30 years, a tremendous guy and a really good coach. And uh, they potentially could be coming back to Fargo. They'll have a tough uh, first game there as well though let's take a look at the ticket situation map that out for you tickets go on sale today online only and it's 6 p.m it's been 2 p.m in the past online only today at 6 p.m the season ticket holder deadline which is uh, a date that everybody wants to know about 5 p.m friday that's this friday on black friday november 24th there's the ticket prices there's the rundown uh, Coach, it's playoff time. It's just a fun time of year, isn't it? It, it really is. We're excited, and the uh, guys are really excited. We're going to take a little bit of a break this yeah. week, enjoy Thanksgiving with our families, and then get back ready to go. Yep. Enjoy it, everybody. The Bison are 10-1, and one, the number two seed overall. The road to Frisco has started, and thank goodness that weather is in our rearview mirror at Illinois State. A big win for the Bison, though. We'll see you next week, folks.